Hi, it's Matt from 16-Bit Bench. Um, I've got a great thing to play with today. Uh, it's a Neo Geo CD. It's a Japanese import and it has a Japanese power supply. So the two jobs we're gonna do today are uh, mod it for the EU region, because that's the region we're in, and uh, replace the power supply with one that runs on 240 volts. So I bought this uh, as uh, non-working on eBay for I think it was £40 at the time. Uh, I've worked out that the main problem is that the AC adapter is uh, Japanese, so it's 100 volts. It, it's been blown, excuse me, it's been blown uh, because someone plugged it into the UK 240 volt supply. So inside here is a, is a fuse and uh, inside the f and the fuse has blown and also there's a component that seems to have died as well so I had considered uh, repairing this power supply uh, and trying to convert it to um, 240 volts but now I'm considering that I'm not actually going to do that uh, so what I am going to do is I'm going to take the uh, take the cable and I'm going to attach it to a new different power supply and use that instead so yeah, the two problems really are that this fuse uh, will blow every time it's plugged into 240, obviously. And uh, there's a component here, I think it's a capacitor or something, I'm not really sure what it is, but it's completely exploded. Um, so that pretty much writes this power supply off, which is a shame because Neo Geo power supplies are worth about 50 pounds sold. Uh, but you know, it's I only have one. So if I sold this, with the connector, I can't power this console. So, what? Oh, don't want to do that. What I have here is a um, is a power supply for a hard drive. Uh, it's 240 volts. Actually, it's a variable power supply. So it takes 100 to 240. It outputs 5 and 12 volts. So it's actually slightly over voltage for the Neo Geo. I could use a voltage regulator. Uh, and bring it right down to 10 and, and make sure it stays out. I could use a um, pair of resistors or ver even a ver variable resistor to bring it all the way down to 10. Um, but I don't think that's necessary. It doesn't need to be exactly 10 volts. It will happily work with 12. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. So first of all, I'm gonna take the, power, the new power supply apart. I'm gonna swap the cable on it with the cable from the Neo Geo. Then I'm gonna check the voltages on everything and make sure they're all they're all right before I plug the console in. We're gonna plug the console in, check it work, check it's working, and uh, and yeah, play some games. Yeah! Two power supplies are now open on the bench and we can see uh, this is the Neo Geo one here and this is the donor uh, hard drive power supply here that we're gonna be using. Um, uh, conveniently, they both use three wires although they are um, they are uh, different so on the Neo Geo you have white red and black uh, black is going to 10 volts uh, white is going to ground and uh, white so red is going to ground and white is going to 5 volts which is weird you'd expect black to be ground on this power supply it's a bit more sensible so uh, red is 12 volts a uh, white is 5 volts and black is ground um, now I've checked the cable for the Neo Geo power supply it will fit here inside the new power supply so that's great everything will look nice and neat once it's in there yeah so uh, always make a note of this kind of thing so you don't get lost halfway through I mean if they were exactly the same and they made sense then that would be no problem if, if red was 12 volts was the higher voltage on both 1, 12 and 10 then this would be fine but I'm, I'm gonna write it down yeah so now I can just reassemble the uh, the new power supply and I will plug it in test the voltage with a multimeter and then consider plugging it into the Neo Geo and see if that powers on that's the power supply done. Let's plug it in and see if it explodes. Didn't explode, that's good. You see the little LEDs come on, which means something's working inside there. So here we've got the Neo Geo 3 pin. So let's just take a look at that. You can see it's kind of 
strange shape there. Um, and on the Neo Geo power supply, it tells you what the pinout is. So five volts is top, uh, 10 is to the right, and ground is to the left. So that should be pretty easy to check. I've got my handy multimeter here. Turn it to DC. So just checking this again, ground is the bottom left. So let's pull that off. Got 5.2 on the 5 volt rail and on the 12, I've got 11.98. So here's the Neo Geo on the bench. Uh, the new power supply is uh, is connected. I just wanted to cover the um, the power out of here. So um, the output of the new power supply is five volts at two amps and 12 volts at two amps. On the old power supply, it was five volts at two amps and 10 volts at one amp. So that means the new power supply can actually supply more power. So it's actually probably a little bit better than the old one. I'm just going to go ahead and, and put 12 volts into this and, and see how we go. Uh, after reading the forums, uh, the person that uh, had originally used the power supply uh, to, to do on, as a replacement for their Neo Geo didn't have any problems with it at 12 volts. Uh, I don't really envision there being any problems at 12 volts. Uh, any logic in here that runs at 10 will run at 12, so uh, it's probably not a problem. So, okay, let's hit the power button. And there we have, little red LED comes on, so I know it's powering up. Next we'll connect it to the TV and see and see what kind of picture we're getting, which I think it should default to a CD player interface uh, if it's working. So yeah, let's take a look. So I've plugged the Neo Geo in and uh, yeah, I'm getting no video, um, which is a bit of a concern. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna need to take it back to the to bench and see if I can figure out what's going on here. So day two of trying to figure out the Neo Geo, I think I've found the problem. Uh, the connector, the power connector is loose. So uh, yeah, I found that if I held it down, I could get the, I could get it to boot. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, get a, a small screwdriver or something. You can see these pins, you can see the ring there. It's like a split ring in each pin. Uh, so if I crimp those a little bit, that'll make it a bit tighter and make a better fit. And that should uh, that should resolve the problem. Yeah! Just used a, a pair of pliers. Can you see that there? They're, they're a bit more misshapen now, which in some ways is actually better because that means they'll at least make a contact. Um, so yeah, it, it seems to be working now. The Neo Geo powers up and works fine, which is great. Um, it was sold as forty, but apparently it just did, had a bad power supply. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open it up and I'm going to mod it for the EU region. Um, so inside there's some jumpers that uh, and you just need to bridge one of them uh, to set it to EU. Or I could set it to, e to US. I did think about putting a switch in on in the back. Uh, you know, I could just have a little switch here. But I thought, how often are you really going to want to change, uh, change the region? <laughs> you know, uh, it's a Japanese region at the moment. Um, I'm... You know, I'm selling it in the UK. It's going to be an EU region machine. It's going to be in English anyway. So there's really no point in putting a switch in. Um, if someone down the line wants to put a switch in, then you know they can drill a hole in this case. But you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I think it's a, you know, it's a good looking machine. Why should I drill a hole in a case for a, a mod that really achieves little to nothing? So um, yeah, I'm not going to do that. We'll mod it uh, inside. Uh, and yeah, if someone wants to come along later and put a switch on, that's their, that's their decision. I'm not going to do that. Sure, so I'm going to open it up now and we'll take a look inside. Hi, right, so I'm just switching to iPhone uh, to show you the internals of the Neo Geo. Um, we don't really need to delve any deeper than this. So this is the four corner screws are out uh, there. And this gives us access to everything that we need to perform uh, the region mod. So if we look over here, 
just above this uh, resistor bank. Yeah, this this cable. Right? You can see the. This is how you uh, set the country code. So uh, USA has jumper one bridged, and uh, EU has jumper two bridged. And the jumpers are the other side. So there's jumper one, jumper two, three, and four. You can see that it just needs a uh, a bridge placed in there, uh, and it should be fine. So you can see there is the is jumper number two, which now sets the console to the European region according to this table. Uh, I got this information from uh, Gadget UK one six four, his um, YouTube channel, where he's done this mod before. So um, yeah, that's linked in the description. I want to thank him for for that. That uh, is how I knew how to do this. What we what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert the machine to PAL, and that's done relatively simply here. So what you do is you remove this wrist resistor here, this 20k resistor, you can see it's uh, 20k, uh, red is 2, um, so red, black, orange 20k. Uh, you move this and place it with a 16k resistor. I've only got a 15k at the moment, so we'll see if that works, and if that doesn't, I have to water some 16ks. The other thing you do is you remove R55, uh, and you jump, uh, jumper one here and that will turn it from NTSC to PAL so I think one does the frame rate and then the other does the video standard and here we are uh, Neo Geo CD up and running working um, so what we've done is replace the power supply with a new new power supply um, Use the original cable. Uh, turns out the cable wasn't the the connectors on the cable weren't too good, so bent those back into shape with a pair of pliers. That means they now make better connection on the back of the box. And when you insert and remove the plug, you can you can tell um, that it uh, it's better. Uh, other than that, we modded it for the European region, so language is going to be English now when it boots up instead of Japanese. Uh, we changed the TV standard from NTSC to PAL uh, and yeah, and just gave the thing a general clean, cleaned the lens, made sure the gears were, had grease in them and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it's in pretty good shape. So let's give it a go. Let's play a game. Um, of course, now we're going to suffer from the notoriously long loading times of the Neo Geo CD. So let's see how we get on. Let's try another game. Why isn't, why, isn't, why isn't PGA Golf this much fun? In fact, where's the new PGA Golf? Wasn't there like one in 2016 or 2015 or something?
on the green! Two birdies in a row. I mean, the level of excitement in here is palpable. I think I'm going to need to take a break from this game. We're going to need to play something else. So, yeah. So let's play something else. Loading. I just see Metal Slug uh, is has faster loading times, which is one of the things it's renowned for in this console. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a SD card um, mod for this. I can look that up. Dang it. And there we go. So, um, what did we do? Well, we replaced the power supply with, with a new one, uh, an off-the-shelf hard drive power supply that provides 12 and 5 volts. Uh, the original power supply provided 10 and 5 volts. Um, looked at modifying the 12 volt rails to provide 10. Uh, at the end of the day, it didn't actually need it. The console accepts 12 volts fine, so that's not a problem. Uh, other than that, we modified it to the European region because that's where we are and that's where it will be for sale. Um, it also changed the standard from NTSC to PAL by adding a jumper, removing a resistor, and uh, putting and changing a resistor from 20 to 16K. So thanks for watching my video on, on the Neo Geo CD. Um, Follow us on Facebook and, and Twitter, it's 16-Bit Bench. Um, please subscribe if you like the video, and like the video if you like the video. Um, there's more coming all the time, I'm trying to do two a week, uh, running the gambit from classic consoles like the Neo Geo, arcade machines, handhelds, all the stuff that uh, we refurb and sell here at 16-Bit Bench. Uh, there's stuff I'm making videos about. So yeah, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time. Dang it.